All right, welcome back to our MySQL series. In the previous lesson, we went through some of the options involved in, in setting up your MySQL database, some of the hosting options and server options, uh, etc. If you didn't watch that part, you should probably go back and watch that first before this. And where we left off was coming to this initial PHP MyAdmin screen. As promised, we're gonna go ahead and kind of talk about the layout here and some of the, the tools involved with PHP uh, my admin um, and directly underneath this is going to show our hosting account DNet and the databases we have created that are associated with this account we created in the previous lesson this basics database this down here was another database that we created for a different tutorial and what this number in parentheses here is representing is how many tables are in that database first things first let's go ahead and we're going to select our database which is underscore basics and it's going to change the view just a little bit uh, we'll call this database mode now we're working in the database mode the first tab we have here is the structure tab and this tab is going to show us the structure of the database uh, more specifically it's going to show us the tables that are in the database when in table view as opposed to this database view the structure will show the structure of the table which will show the uh, various fields um, or columns in the database the next tab is the SQL tab and in here is where we can actually write our SQL queries and manipulate the database this way and this would be opposed to uh, doing things using the GUI. This is handy at some times. It's also good to just kind of test queries and, and such before you implement them into your PHP code or, or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, we might get into that a little later. Search here, um, we can't really do much with because there isn't anything to search and that's why we're getting this, this X when we uh, hover over the tab. Uh, but basically this allows us to do a query uh, and find certain parts of the uh, database. Similar with this query tab, can't do anything because there aren't any databases and we'll get into that later. Export, can't do anything with either. With import, we could take an exported database from elsewhere and import it into our database. Uh, this could be handy, uh, for instance, say you've got a client uh, who wanted a website that was built just like another one of your client's websites. Rather than reinventing the wheel or export the structure of that database and import it into a new database and you save yourself a bunch of time. Uh, and you have various different uh, methods of importing which is comma separated values. Uh, this is a, just a basic text file where the values um, for the rows and fields are all separated by commas. SQL is the most um, common, I would believe, next to CSV. Uh, SQL is the actual SQL code, and the rest of these here. But uh, we'll dive into this a little later. And lastly, we have the Operations tab. Uh, this, this tab allows you to do some general maintenance, I, I guess, to the, the database. You can change the uh, change the name of the database, you can create a new table from here, uh, you can copy the database, and so on. From here, let's go ahead and we're going to click on the structure tab again. And we're going to go ahead and create our first table. And if we jump over here to Wikipedia, which probably, nah, it's not the greatest reference, but whatever, uh, we can get the general definition of a table in a database. Uh, a table is a set of data elements or values that is organized using a model of vertical columns which are identified by their name and horizontal rows. Um, you can continue reading on this in your, in your own spare time. Um, an example of a database table would be um, let's use your phone uh, for an example, if you have a modern phone, um, you you have a contact list in there, and uh, hopefully your phone isn't that old that you don't even have contact lists in there. Uh, it might be time to upgrade, but anyway, um, or with that contact list, it, it's actually a database, and if you were to think of the table involved in that database 
and we're going to use uh, Microsoft Excel really quick just uh, to give you a visual representation of what uh, a table looks like. Um, I'm not really going to get into how Excel works. Uh, really, this is just for an example. So our, our contact list will have a set of uh, columns or fields that uh, represent certain values in each contact. Um, so in this, this line here, we're going to create some general fields that would be involved in this table. And the first would be the ID number of the contact. Uh, this, this is something you may never actually see on your phone, but it's a way that uh, the phone can decipher um, two very similar rows from another or contacts from another. If you have two Bob Smiths, then how does the uh, phone know which Bob Smith you are referring to? And the way it does is with the ID number, uh, which is generally considered the key or the primary key of the table. So anyway, so we have our ID number. Then let's say we have our first name, last name, and phone number. And this is a... Uh, this will be an old school phone without uh, any special features. Just a first name, last name, and phone number. So these are our field names um, or column names. And anytime we insert a new um, contact, this would be considered in database terms creating a new record. Um, so we'll say ID number one is me and our phone number so this represents a row or record in the database um, so let's add another one And this would represent uh, record number two or row number two in the database. And just to make this visually stimulating here, we'll add a little bit of formatting so you can decipher the different uh, elements of this table. And now it kind of resembles a table more. And this is kind of where the, the name comes from, table, a data table. Now this is just uh, in Excel, so we don't have a lot of the features that we would have in an actual database. So let's go ahead and take this concept here, um, or we could call this a database sketch here, and, and make it an actual table in our database. What we're going to do from the structure screen is we're going to create a new table on database dnet underscore basics. Um, our table name, we're going to call it contacts. And our number of fields would be how many columns are going to be in this table. So if we look back at our sketch here, we have one, two, three, four. So we're going to have four fields. And if you're not positive on that uh, at this point, that's okay. We can add and remove fields uh, later on down the row. But uh, to begin with, you'd want to at least get your, your basic rows in there, or fields in there, like your ID and name. Uh, let's go ahead and say go. And it's going to give us this screen here, which allows us to define the field names and uh, attributes associated with that field. So our first field is going to be ID. And we're just going to do everything in lowercase. And the type of the field is going to be an integer. which So it's going to just be a number. And the length of the field is uh, how many characters will be allowed in this field. And uh, let's just say 5, or 3, sorry. 
and so that means our our contact list can go up to 999 uh, contacts before and there's no more room um, default is a parameter that we're going to leave as none at the moment uh, we'll skip this and this here these two collation and attributes um, generally you can leave those as is basic databases um, the field is not going to be null so we'll keep that unchecked and now this is very important uh, with the ID field here for our index property we need to call this the primary index um, also known as the uh, database key or the table key or the primary key um, this is what's going to be able to decipher one record from another as I mentioned uh, a couple seconds ago so this is our primary key one other thing to note about the primary key is that it does not allow duplicates so if you try to enter manually a new record um, with the same index or uh, ID number as another it will not allow you to do that uh, the last uh, property here is the AI property which is auto increment uh, I would say nine times out of ten for your primary key you're gonna wanna check this and what this will do is instead of uh, you having to worry about adding the correct new ID number to each new record um, MySQL is going to automatically um, look at the very last record in the database and then add uh, plus one to it so that you have the next ID number in the sequence so this is pretty important alright we'll come to our next field which was first name and we can't have spaces in our name so we'll use the underscore and the type of this is going to be a var car which uh, I believe is variant character or variable character something like that basically pretty much any character on the keyboard um, with a few exceptions can go in this field and what we're doing is we're, we're applying a data type to these fields is, is what this type is and it's strict it's saying um, this is what it can be now this is probably one of the loosest data types involved in a database whereas integer is strict it can only be an integer or a numeric value so anyway moving on the length in characters uh, first name I'd say let's give 150 the odds of uh, somebody having a first name that's 150 characters is pretty slim so you should be safe default we'll keep it as none um, the index all the way over here we don't need to give this an, uh, an index property so we can actually move on to the next field which is last name and just like the first name field we're gonna make this a var car and I'd say we can probably be safe with another 150 and just like the first name field we don't need to apply any of these at the moment so let's move into our last um, field which is phone and uh, you might think okay well this is a it's gonna be a number so let's make this an integer um, that's that could be the case but it isn't uh, we're gonna go ahead and make this a var car as well because uh, in this instance we're gonna let the user um, enter in the dashes in between the the numbers and if we strictly data type this to an integer uh, we would get an error when they tried to put in the dashes um, so the phone number let's go ahead and be pretty specific with this one um, and so with the phone number let's just go ahead and give 20 um, that will leave enough room depending on if they wanted to put parentheses over the area code or not uh, the rest of this will just leave as is and we'll go ahead and say save and one really cool feature about PHP my admin is that it actually will output the code involved in what we just did so this is a great tool for learning uh, how to use queries um, without the GUI uh, 